Well, hello everybody, and welcome to Carry Your Key, a healthy weight treasure chest, and live the gospel, royal flow. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, guess what? I'm coming today to you with some words of encouragement. Oh, yeah. And maybe a testimony or two of some beautiful things that I'm celebrating today, actually. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm actually celebrating eight years of God's amazing grace that the Lord actually took alcoholism out of my life. When I woke up on July 14th in 2017, I woke up in the morning and I didn't go get a glass of wine like I normally would have or a glass of beer, you know, and just drink. At that time, I was going through a really rough time in my life because my mother was dying. Oh, yeah. I actually um, went to Houston, Texas to go and pick her up from her home and pack her up and bring her back to live with my husband and I until she, you know, got her own apartment, which at that particular time, she wasn't in a hospice state. She was able to have her own space at that time. Yes, she was. But as the years started going by, she became worse and worse. And a lot of things happened with that. And I was really going through a really, really tough time. I tell you. But God is faithful. Because look at me now. I'm just celebrating this eight years. My God from glory. He's faithful. I mean, when God takes something out of your life, it's like, I'm not even going to talk about being sober. Okay? Uh, and like some people say, I've been clean for this long time. I've been sober. No. When he takes it out of your life, it's not, it's like, it has never existed. I mean, that's what I experienced and everything that he's taken out of my life because alcoholism isn't the first thing that he's taken out of my life. He's taken many other things out of my life. <laughs> Let me see because he's, <laughs> this, wait a minute, I had to fix this show. Is he getting ready to take this out of my life too? Maybe I should take this off. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna keep on going. I'm just gonna go ahead and fix it. I just noticed it was coming off. So I'm just gonna fix it a little bit. Because what? You guys already know the story. I, I, I'm, I'm not doing the editing yet. And I think it's a good thing sometimes. Because, you know, it's like that way you can really see um, reality. Because life in itself really is real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the ups and downs, the ins and outs, the turns, the situations, the things that go on in life that... Um, can really change our perspectives in many, many ways about many things. But thank God for Jesus because, you know, I found that when I got his perspective, <laughs> oh my God, I was able to see a lot clearer <laughs> and have some open eyes. I wasn't blind anymore when I, you know, really began to see what he was doing. And so... That testimony right there, oh my God, uh, about alcohol, it's a, it's a really, it's a, it's, it leads to a road of destruction, we all know this, and a lot of terrible things, so I'm really celebrating his glory in giving him glory in, in every way, and so today with everything that I would like to share with you and to speak on just briefly, uh, you know, I'm just asking that the Lord will be glorified. Pray with me on that, will you? That he'll be glorified and the family of God will be edified as well and built up with encouragement and strength, knowing that their sister here, Kim Kim, 
loves them, but God loves you so much more. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Okay? So you just keep on holding on and keep on believing God, trusting him, meditating his word. Uh, he's going to show you this new and living way and what he does. Because I believe, I know this to be true, that morality, those moral laws that they couldn't keep, in the Old Testament, God wrote moral laws on our hearts. Everything in the law was morality. It's written on our hearts. <laughs> Those tablets made of tablets of stone that turned to flesh are fleshy hearts. Everything that God says about that is true. And I believe how it gets activated even more so is when we believe. When our believing is right, turning off all of the stuff from the outside, the world, you know, with the media and, you know, different things like that, that our preachers are asking us to do so that we can concentrate on the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. And see where he's leading us in life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So... So also in, uh, it's coming up, it's going to be uh, eight years as well for uh, when I was supposed to have surgery in my right foot. You remember I gave a testimony about that uh, in a couple of videos ago. Yeah, all of this. These kinds of things uh, are going to be in the books that, you know, I'm writing. I'm just going to do like some little values of probably each and just uh, put them out there. Uh, when God releases them so that you can hear them in their totality. But, yeah, there's one or two that I wanted to really kind of focus in on today, if I may, uh, that I really think will encourage you to. And it's geared towards an episode that happened to me uh, on this alcoholic journey that I was on back in the day. Okay, but at the same time, it was a pull and a tug situation, okay? Because at that time, I was going to the very first church that I started going to when I lived in Las Vegas. And um, I was out there, and I had actually started going to church, and things were going really well singing in the choir and everything. And I wasn't gambling, I wasn't drinking, I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> okay, and I tell you, one night I decided I actually wanted to go out and I wanted to have a drink. Okay, and there was a grocery store. Now this is gonna blow your mind because this is this this is kind of funny and at the same time it's it is a supernatural thing that God did. Now, I'm telling you, it's unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor of God, once again. So now, let me tell you this, because this is going to be a trip. All right, so now, oh, before I get started with it, I got to, you know, do you like the backgrounds and the backdrops and everything? They're here for specific reason that God wanted me to put these up, because uh, let me just tell you a little bit about them, and you probably already know where this place is, right? Look, I mean, because, I mean, you can, there's a difference in each one of these racetracks, okay? One says you're a winner, and the other one over here, there's a cloud of people that are in these stands right here. Wow, that's a trip. But in between, look, there's heaven, huh? <laughs> Do you know, uh, spiritually, um, when I saw this, see, because I'm, I'm more like practical. As a hairstylist, there is being practical, we're actually working on the people. You know, you got your hands in it kind of way. So I'm more of a practical visionary person. My hands are in it, where some people are more, you know, in the paperwork part of it. 
the study, the guides, the this and that, and there, this and that. You know, the way that they um, learn, you know. But I have to actually physically be touching something. So a lot of times when I use these um, backdrops, it's because I know the Holy Spirit has led me to do them, to put them up this way, because I can really understand a lot better what's taking place in a word that I might want to bring. So before I go ahead and tell that other story, I just want to talk about this for a moment uh, because I think that it depends on you too, how you look at it. So now, the way I'm seeing this is that when we got in Christ Jesus, at that time when we believed and we received Christ as our Lord, our Savior, you know, uh, we believed, we became winners right then and there. Because why? We were translated into Christ and we're seated in heavenly places in Him, right? I mean, that's Bible 101, right? That's what I was taught that immediately we're seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. And something I wanted to point out to you about this is I don't know if you notice, but in the stands here, there's nobody there. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, well, wait a minute, God, does is, is that mean like we just went into heavenly places in Christ Jesus, seated in him? Because when you're in Christ, oh my God, <laughs> I can go on and on and on talking about when we're in Christ Jesus and we are seated in him in heavenly places. Oh my God. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow, did you ever think about that? Because look, when we're in heavenly places, we're in heaven. We places. We're not in the world. Did you ever think about that? We're, if you really think about it, now we being ambassadors here in the world, we come in the world, but we're not of the world. Oh, so much to it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Woo! When I think about it like that. You know, I'm not saying anything that that's the rapture because that is not the rapture. Okay? We have assignment being in the kingdom of God already and coming here and, you know, drawing those others to Christ. Right? Absolutely, because there's a time that everything, all these people are going to come in and they're being saved, even now. Hallelujah. And we are waiting on our heavenly bodies. But now over here, when I look at this one over here, now did you notice this? Look, this actually has people in the stands with the black and white, you know, the black and white, the, you know, the you know, like uh, the racetrack kind of way and the umpire of our hearts and everything with the black and white. Um, but the people in the stands are like the people that are cheering us on. Like we're in the stands cheering them on, you know, like people that haven't come to Christ yet. That's the way I look at it. I do. Because this is us here in the stands cheering everybody else. Come on, get in the family of God. So yeah, just going on and on with that, that's kind of, I kind of like saw that. So it really depends on your mindset too, where you are in your mindset and your walk with the Lord through his word. Okay, because my eyes were opened to that a lot, you know, a lot better when I started, you know, like really just turning off the world and all the tragic stuff and you know, because every time you turn around, there's something was going on. And I'm like, look, I don't need my mind all messed up because it's not the thing that, um, you know, because it's not the thing that you, uh, what is, what does the scripture say? Um, uh, it's, it, it's like our, our gate, our gates, right? We got our eye gates. They're gates, actually. Our ear gates. Their gates, what you listen to, what you let come in, and what comes out of a man. It's not so much what goes into the man that defiles him, but what comes out of a man. Right? Isn't that scripture? 
they defile. So the same thing with your eyes. It defiles you what you're watching. And sometimes you don't realize that. But, you know, I realized it after a while. I was like, whoa, Lordy. But in the conversion process, just sticking with him, you know, reading and meditating in his word, you know, it just takes me into the heavenlies. And thinking about those things that are above. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of mention that. You know, um, it just depends on how you look at it and how you, you know, uh, esteem your life into your meditation and uh, the Lord and how you think about him. Because really, the Father, you know, uh, really loved me back to life. Because I, too, <laughs> used to sit up and watch all kinds of stuff on TV a long time ago. And, uh, you know, it was just really like a lot of comedy stuff because I'm not really into, like, scary stuff, not like that. But, you know, it was distractions, okay? So, anyway, I can go on and on with that. But let me get to this story here. Now, it's all about this scripture right here. In the final end of the story that I'm going to tell you, peace, be still. Okay, now, this is what happened. When I was, it was way back in the 19, no, yeah, 1990s, the early part of 1990s when I, when I moved to Las Vegas, the second time I went there, okay, uh, and I was going to a Baptist church there. Awesome church, or awesome people, everything. And uh, I decided one night, shoot, everything was going well, and I said, something. I think I'm just gonna have a drink, right? So they had a grocery store across the street, and I went over there, and I noticed that one of the people that I go to church with, car, her car was in the parking lot. She had one of those cars that I, I knew that that was her car. Okay, and I thought, oh my gosh, oh, I don't want her to see me coming in here and getting any alcohol. So I says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside, I'm going to see if I can see where she's at, and wait until she leaves and just go it out. And that's exactly what I did. And so I had some alcohol, I did, and I went home and I had a drink. And before you know it, I was feeling pretty good, and living in Las Vegas, I tell you, I hadn't gambled in I don't know how long. I mean, because I was doing pretty good. You know, I had a hair salon where actually I was in booth rental and I had a beautiful apartment and a lot of things, you know, and things were going really well, right? So I says, ah, I've gone out and just gamble a little bit. So I called the cab. And when the cab got there, I opened the door and this big gust of wind just kind of like, was like, kind of like, almost like blowing me back in the house, but it, you can see me kind of like, it seemed like I was might have been fighting to just get past it so I can go. <laughs> Cause I was, I was buzzed. You know, I had a little buzz going on with that alcohol, right? So I went on and I took a cab though. Wise thing to do, don't drink and drive. Okay, so now when I got to the casino, <laughs> It didn't take long, but because I didn't have a whole lot of money, but uh, I actually just spent, I spent pretty much my rent money for the week to pay my rent, my, my apartment rent, but I didn't worry about it because I thought, you know, shoot, I'm going to go back to work the next day and I'm going to start making it. Uh, uh, during the week because it wasn't due until that Friday but I tell you that night that I gambled that money away I was in tears I was just slobbering crying all over the floor in the kitchen I'll never forget I'm like Lord I'm so sorry forgive me forgive me I'm like, oh, God, help me help me I was going through I really was <laughs> but even though I went out gambling and all that stuff that night you know I got up and I went to church Oh, yes, I did. I went to church that morning and I had to sing in the choir. 
And I was there in the choir with the church, and we sang, and the pastor started preaching. Now, check this out. This is going to blow your mind. Now, do you know the pastor started preaching, and he said, he said, you know, he says, I used to have a grandmother that trusted me with everything. And she used to send me to the store and to pick up things for her from the store. And he said that his grandmother trusted him so much that, you know, he, she even wrote him a blank check. He could just go out and just, he had a blank check and he could go and go grocery shopping for her and everything. And he would just fill in the amount and bring her groceries home, right? And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God, I so wish somebody would give me a blank check right now so I can pay my rent. I'm telling you, I was thinking this in my head. You know, and I was listening to him talk about how his grandmother loved him and trusted him so much that... Yeah, she would just say, honey, here, just go and get me something. And he'd take the check, and when he got to the grocer, he'd just fill it out there and come on back and bring his grandmother her things, right? And I thought, wow, if I just had a blank check, I'd be all right. So at that time, I didn't really think I had anything to worry about because I was going to go to work the next day on Monday. And I'd make it up, right, in booth rental because I had clients that were going to get their hair done throughout the week. So I got to work, and I got a phone call. And it was one of my clients. You guessed it. And she said, oh, Kim, you know, I'm sorry I can't make it today. I'm going to have to cancel. So I said, oh, okay, no, not a problem, not a problem. And before you know it, somebody else called. And they canceled. Throughout the week, it was cancellation every day. Nobody came in throughout the week. And I thought, oh my God. So all I remember was that when I was at that hair salon on Thursday night, because my, my, my rent was due Friday morning, okay? But Thursday, I was just remember just sitting there looking in the mirror at my, in my station, just saying a scripture. I could only remember one scripture at that time, and that was this one right here. Peace. He says, be still and know that I am God. And that's Psalms 46 and 10. Be still and know that I am God. That's the only scripture I could think of, and so... I just looked in the mirror and I just was like, okay. So, on Friday morning, I got a phone call. And it was my mother. Okay, she lived in California at the time. Like I said, this was way back in the early 1990s. Okay, and she called me up and I answered the phone. Now see, let me tell you something, my mother, she was the type that played tough love, okay? She like, <laughs> she wasn't giving up no money. And if she did, she'd give you a lecture that was out of this world and she'd be like, look, I ain't gonna ask her for nothing. That kind of way, that's the kind of mom I had. So it was like, uh-uh, I wasn't gonna think about asking her. But she called me and you know what she said to me? She said, how you doing, Kim? I says, oh, mama, I'm doing just fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, everything's great. She says, well, you know, I just wanted to call you and let you know how proud I am of you. You know, you got a beautiful apartment there in Vegas, and, you know, you've got your own business going on and everything like that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, everything's great, mom. Everything's great. She says, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, um, if you ever need anything, I left a blank check in Nicole's bedroom, in her closet, up under a shoebox. I was like, what? You know, to myself, I said, you did what? She said, yeah, go look and see if it's there. See, because, let me just stop right here and say why. Because my mother had been at my house a couple of months before that. 
okay? Because she would come up and stay. And my daughter at that time was, you know, like I says, we were kind of like back and forth with my daughter. We were, you know, she was helping me take care of her. So she actually had picked her up and took her home with her. So, um, yeah, so she says, in Nicole's bedroom, in the closet, top shelf, there is a shoebox that I left a blank check. I, so she says, go in there and see if it's there. So I went in there, and sure enough, there was a check there that she had her signature on, okay? And when I got back, I says, Mommy, I got on the phone, I says, ha, ha, ha. She says, look, she says, just, if you ever need anything, just go ahead and put in ever how much you need, and don't worry about it. I said, what? She says, yes, yeah, I'll take care of it. Just go ahead. And, if, and in fact, I got an account that's open that's just for you. She said this. My mother said this to me. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I just was just like, thank you, Mom. I didn't tell her what I had done. But you see what God did? Oh, my God. This right here was like a miracle. I, was like, I, I couldn't believe it. And I went and I paid my rent. She never asked me about it. Let me tell you something. When that happened, so long ago, back in the early 90s, when my mother came back to California after we brought her back here, now let me tell you, her mind was always straight. My mother's mind was okay although she was ill in other ways she she had a good memory and you know i asked her about that <laughs> she said uh-uh i don't remember doing that to this, to this day to that day you know when it was you know because like i said she passed away but she never remembered doing that so i'm just like god is faithful God is faithful. So I just wanted to share that with you because these kind of stories right here are the ones that I'm going to be writing about in my books. And I want to share them with you. But since today marks that special occasion of not drinking anymore, I'm sure my mother is in heaven looking down or in heaven looking around. <laughs> I'm not saying looking down because, you know, like I says, we're seated in heavenly places. Yes, we are in Christ Jesus. And uh, I know I'm going to see her again one day. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, I don't know if we'll be talking about that, but, you know, I tell you what I'm going to do, though, is just be thanking and praising God like we all will be when that day comes. And we're all going to have brand new bodies and everything, I tell you. So we're just going to stay and endure and just let God love us back to life because he literally did that to me. He literally did. With his word, with his patience, his kindness, his compassion, his compassion, his, his heart that he so deeply wants us to know how much he loves us all. So, with that being said, uh, yeah, I think that's enough. I think that's enough because what I'm going to do is just enjoy the gifts that he's given me in music, in ministry, everything else. And just enjoy them and try to just build you up as you build me up. Because I tell you, when I look at you guys online, I tell you, I love you guys so much. Um, you really have helped me in ways that I can't tell you how much I thank you. And I'm talking about everyone. Everyone that has contributed to my life in some kind of a way. And I hope that I have some kind of way contributed to yours as well. As we grow together in the body of Christ, I tell you, 
I've had so many wonderful things. For me to even be doing this song right here, uh, I think this is Through the Fire. <laughs> oh, just check it out. Try it by fire, coming out gold, hallelujah. <laughs> but, you know, I actually met Shaka Khan. A long time ago I did, when I was, I used to be, work at a grocery store in Hollywood. Oh yeah. And um, I was a box girl. I was. And uh, I remember I was sitting at the bus stop um, that was outside of the place that I work. And I actually saw her pull up in her little Mercedes she had that big hair, you know, and everything. I knew it was her because I had every album that she had. You know, I knew all her music, right? And But she didn't know that. And I actually went up to her car. And I said, oh, I'm Shaka Khan. Because see, at that time, I think I was about uh, 17, 16, 17 years old, right? And um, I just went up to her car and I asked her for her autograph. I said, oh, can I have your autograph? And her little daughter was with her, and she just kind of sit there. She says, well, if you have a pen, because, you know, I don't have an ink pen, so if you have one, you know, so I just kind of like, you know, because I didn't have a pen, so I was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, you know, I don't have one either, so I just kind of left. And do you know the very next day, it was the very next day when I was at work, and I was boxing groceries, you know, and everything, and people were in line. Do you know that she came through my line again? She came through, came to the to the grocery store, and came through the line where I was checking out, checking, putting groceries in bags. And when she got up to me, you know, and I was bagging her groceries, she was like, do you still want my autograph? And I says, well, yeah. She says, well, okay, then, you know, I don't remember everything, the whole conversation, but that was pretty much it. But for her to even come back, you know, and say that, I thought that was pretty amazing. And I just wanted to say a shout out. I love you, Chaka Khan. And I just wanted to tell you that God loves you so much more. And, um, you know, I don't know if you're a believer or not, but, you know, I just want you to know that God is faithful. You know, he is. And for me to even be, you know, rewriting the words to this song is just really a blessing. And I hope that you've been blessed by it. But I'm that one. I don't. I know you've had millions of people come up to you and say whatever to get your autograph. But I don't know if you remember that time. But that's me. <laughs> that was me a long time ago. I was 17 years old. But, yeah, I, I had every album that you ever sang. And I'm that but, you know, I'm like, <laughs> who can sing like Chaka Khan? Oh, my gosh. David Foster actually wrote that song, Through the Fire. I found that out later. Yeah, but uh, he's an awesome writer, David Foster, my God. So, um, yeah, there's so many people that, you know, have, you know, uh, I have memories with. You know, when I lived in Los Angeles, you know, because Hollywood was there, you know, you'd see stars all the time. And uh, I remember I was working at a uh, restaurant, Dharma Graham. I worked there when I was young, too. And um, it was a Moroccan restaurant in Hollywood, right? So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so, so it was one night. When, now, I don't know if Carol Brunette will remember this, okay? I'm hoping that she, she might remember this time. Because she came in because Harvey Carmen, who was, you know, some, some people that she, you know, like the Carol Brunette show that was on the show, they gave a birthday party for me, so they had a big birthday celebration at this restaurant. I was a hostess there right? And so I would check people in and do reservations throughout the day and call people in reserve or whatnot. So I knew that she was going to have a big party there and all of them. So anyway, when she came in, oh my God, Carol Burnett 
had on a mink coat and it was a blue fox fur mink coat all the way down to the ground. Beautiful. Her beautiful red hair and everything. She was just gorgeous. And when she, when I saw her and I says, oh, Miss Brunette, you look absolutely fabulous. That coat, I love it on you, right? And so she looked and she says, oh, really? She says, you like this? She says, well, would you like it? And she started taking it off. She says, here, it's yours. And I looked at it and I said, oh my God. And what happened was the maitre d was standing right next to me. He was like my boss. And this man was this tall. <laughs> and he was a big guy, right? And he was pretty sturdy, uh, pretty stern, right? And I kind of looked up at him and looked at her. <laughs> and I says, oh, no, that's okay. No, no, thank you very much. She says, you sure, honey? She says, look. She says, here, go ahead and take it, <laughs> you know. And I says, no, I couldn't. I says, I'll, I, she says, I'll be happy. I says, I'll be happy to go ahead and put it up for you. And she says, okay, just go ahead and put it in the closet then. And so I took her and I took her to the, you know, to the private room that they had and everyone was there. And when I came back, the major D looked at me and he said, why didn't you take the coat? I'll never forget that. And I don't know if she would ever remember something like that if I ever met her or, or, or if, even if she's watching this video. But that was when I was about 17 years old, that episode there. And I tell you, so many things that I can remember. And oh, yeah, even Valerie Harper. Now, my Uncle Ray. Lucas was his name, worked for Valerie Harper, okay, and he was like a, um, a handyman kind of guy, and he did a lot of work for her at her house for years and years and years, and um, do you know that she actually um, used to give me some of her clothing? Oh yeah, I still have an outfit. If I knew I was gonna be talking about this right now, and I'm just gonna go on, but I have the outfit to this day. It's a beautiful green uh, two-piece. It's kind of like a jacket with some beautiful green all the way through it and some pink flowers. It's kind of like a summer outfit, but it's a size six. <laughs> I never uh, wore it. I never got down to a size six. It was it was a gorgeous outfit and she's actually the one that gave me that music box that I was telling you guys about when I and then the other video that I had where I had actually taken the cross out of this music box that I had that music box and put it put the cross around my neck remember when I told you in the last video or, or so that you know I had you know seen this vision so that cross was in that music box that's the one that she actually had given me I had it for years and years and um, uh, so anyway yeah so you know that when my uncle passed she actually paid for his funeral and everything and she came to the funeral that woman right there she was incredible she was just a heart you know a beautiful beautiful person just a giver a love just a giver you know and i remember her doing that and it was just so amazing uh some of the things and people i tell you that um i just found out about <laughs> oh, at juneteenth juneteenth when frederick douglas what happened was um my relatives on my grandmother's side of the family uh that live back east actually are related to Frederick Douglass. And every year there's this video that comes out with these kids that are talking about their great-great uh, grandfather. 
okay? And th that is actually on my cousin's side. And she sent me a text because I wanted to make sure because that's the first time I actually saw the video. And she texted me back and she says, yeah, that was her kids and, and everything about it. And if you guys ever seen it, it's a documentary that um, uh, James Earl Jones was like, one of the um, narrators of. And now James Earl Jones, it was ironic because my Uncle Ray uh, used to work for him too because you know when you work for entertainers or do different things, sometimes it gets around and you get more jobs and so my uncle actually worked for him as well. I just think it's pretty ironic. But yes, yeah, so many things. And my grandfather, my great, great grandfather, great, great, was John, oh, excuse me, John Lucas, who was a captain um, in um, the army, okay? Something like that, okay? Oh, I didn't even know I was gonna say this. I would've came out and had all the information ready, but these kinds of little stories will be in my book, but he's my great, great, great grandfather, and they actually named a town after him named Lucasville. You can look it up. John Lucas, he was, it was named after him. He did some exploits while he was in the military. And so, yeah, so that whole town was named after my great, great, great grandfather. I think that's amazing. And one last thing, I just want to give a shout out. No, maybe I'll just go ahead and testify right now. I'm going to give some shout outs to some people because, you know, one day, I don't know when it'll be, but maybe I'll see you guys in the kingdom. I don't know. And it's just so amazing, the connections that, and the wonderful ways that you impacted my life. Okay? Because I just want to say this. I don't know when I'll ever get to say it. Or if I'll ever meet you to tell you how you really restored and impacted my life. Now, Cece Winans, okay, she doesn't know this, but, um, you know, I was going to college in Las Vegas and at a junior college and there's a scholarship now she might know about this but there was a Joe Williams scholarship now Joe Williams was a musician back in the day but they had scholarships in his name okay and you had to audition for one it was a music scholarship I was going for and so I actually sung the song um, C.C. Winans made popular, you know, when she sung that song named He's Always There, okay? And I tell you, that song right there, when I used to sing, um, go to karaoke, when I had, you know, the Christian music, when I went to the casinos and stuff, singing karaoke way back then, that was one of my favorite songs to sing. I had it on tape, and I still got it. Um, he is always there. To brighten up your day, always stay in every way when it's cold and dreary, and your faith has gotten weary. You don't have to be a I sang that song, and you know, <laughs> CC White is, who go sing? CC White is like, wow. But when I sang that song, you know, I actually did win. I, I mean, I, I earned that scholarship by the grace of God. I'm telling you. And it was a Joe Williams scholarship, and it, it helped to pay for my books and everything that I needed for school for a semester. And I thought, wow, it was really awesome. And so I just want to say shout out, CC Wine is lover. Lover, lover, lover so much. And even um, during the, before the pandemic happened, um, on my journey with uh, Pastor Crefro and Pastor Taffy Dollar, of the World Changers Nation, I tell you, I have so much love for you guys. You just don't know how you impacted my life, how God used you guys to 
get me on course with grace. Because I tell you, um, Pastor Dollar, um, I was actually watching, I think it was TBN or something, uh, way back in 2014, I think it was. Uh, and you were talking about Hebrews chapter 10. Now, about uh, something in there. Oh, gosh, I didn't take it out so I could look at it over here. Let me get my glasses. I'm going to find it real quick. And the scripture uh, pretty much was talking about how if you continue to sin after you've known the truth, then, you know, there's no sacrifice left for your sins, right? Now, you didn't know this, and nobody pretty much knew this, but... That particular scripture right there had me bound for years because even after I moved from Las Vegas the second time to live here like how I am now, I was in church. I was going to church all the time. But when my mother was going through her dying, she was dying and doing that, I became an alcoholic and I was gambling and I remember just getting up from the table and never to gamble again. That's when, you know, my life started changing for the better. But I, at this time, wasn't listening to Creflo Dollar, but I was going to church. And I remember the church that I was going to here in Temecula, I actually had a meeting with the pastor about that very scripture. Because it had me bound in such a way, because I was like, oh my God, I, I've done some of all these sins. You know what I'm saying? And I was I was just like, am I going to go to hell or what? Because I'm sinning. Because, see, see, that's what I'm saying. My life, although it was changing back there, I wasn't, I didn't understand grace until I actually started listening to you. I was, like I said, you must have been on TBN or Daystar or something, because at that time I was listening to both. And um, when I heard you preach on what that was, how you were the one that actually taught me how to read the word in context, how to read from the beginning of the chapter and go all the way through, and how you explained that um, it, was written, it was written to the Hebrews and all of this, and they were still sacrificing bulls and goats. See, and they did not receive Jesus Christ as a final sacrifice. How you explained it, it set me free. And that's when I first started listening to you. And I started buying CDs and tapes. And there's this one that years and years later, that this book right here, I got it here because I, I didn't even know I was going to start talking about this. I don't know if you guys can even see it or not, but I'm just going to leave it here. I'm not going to go through it too much, but... That book right there that I started writing uh, was, it was part of a book, it's only about 27 pages long, was about spiritual blindness because you had a CD, a DVD out about spiritual blindness. And you, what you did was you showed it in scripture where it said it over in another passage in the Old Testament and you compared it to a passage that was in the New Testament. And um, you talked about the blindness being the prison doors of our eyes. We couldn't see. And how you depicted everything. Do you know I bought that CD and I gave virtually all, everybody, my relatives, everybody, I was giving them this so they can understand it because so much, so much, so much to it. And so I tell you, I just want to thank you. And I am a world changer. Hallelujah. I'm a world changer. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, just thinking about, oh my God, all of the blessings and the insight that about grace that I didn't understand. I tell you until I got in your, your ministry and I actually at one time I, I, when you guys had, um, what was it, Grace Life 20, uh, 20 I had planned to go there, right? And I was actually going to look for uh, a place to live because I was thinking about moving there one time but then COVID happened, a lot of stuff and a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, I can, you know, write about that later on. Of, I was just like, I, I couldn't go, you know, and I was like, man. So, you know, anyway, and uh, you guys didn't know this, but 
Georgia now, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but Georgia, my grandmother was born in Neal, Georgia, and her sisters, and Griffin, Georgia, all of that. So you guys, we really could be, you know, physical relatives with one another, I'm sure. You know, if, <laughs> I'm just saying, it's just the connection down through the years you never know what god is doing you know because unless we talk about it and, and to talk to one another and 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 you know just you know just think on the wonderful things about god he's he is just so amazing i tell you just the connections and the music the music that and listening to you preach and teach as I was driving through the Ortega Mountain. Like, oh my God, this kind of like reminds me a lot about it with the trees and everything uh, and going through that mountain. And, you know, because the music that I was listening to when I was going through there, I was listening to, and you guys should get these albums. If you don't have them, they will blow your mind. They will just transform your life. I don't know if you ever heard of a young man, an artist named Jordan Feles. Oh my God, Jordan Feles. He had an album out named Future. And that album, when I used to listen to that, and I still listen to it to this day. It's just so awesome. His name is Jordan Feliz, the Future Album. And he wrote a song on there, Can I Get a Witness? <laughs> he got that. That's the name of the, the song made popular, but that whole album has so much music in it. That's so awesome. I was listening to that. Also going through the mountain, king and country. God only knows what you're going through. God only knows what you've been through. That song. And um, what was it? Daddy Go Keys. Um, haven't seen it yet. Oh, my God. That whole album right there with Danny Go Key. Oh, my God. That. And I tell you what. Who else was? Um, I was listening to um, Nicole and Dave Binion's Follow Me album. Oh, my God. God had me just listening to them every day, all the time I was listening to them. And one day, as I was driving through the mountain in Ortega Mountain, do you know, and I'm, this is the honest truth, these gates right here, I didn't see this part of the gate, that part, but I saw pillars right there. It was like in the clouds. It was like a vision. It wasn't a vision I was having and I wasn't in a trance. But I was actually it was actually eight miles from my home when I got to the place where I was going to make the left turn to or, or to start going up. But I actually saw something that looked like that and the reason why I'm saying this is because my question was always that when Jesus comes back, I know that it, it says that look up because he comes with clouds, right? And my question was always, is he coming on that very day in that moment with the clouds? Or is it going to be a gradual coming of clouds? Because when I saw that, that time, I never saw that again like that. But I did see, like, some clouds that were, like, going up, like, steps like this, and bits of rainbow glistening over and around them. It was just something, and I looked to see where the sun was at, if it was hitting on it a certain way. It was just, you know, just things like this would happen through the years, and, um, I mean, through at that time. And so, yeah, that was my question when he comes back. So that's why, you know, a lot of things that some of us see in the heavenlies, maybe everybody can't see them. I don't know. Maybe just some of us can see what's going on right there. And we, we have an eye, you know, we can just kind of see these things. And maybe everybody uh, can't see them yet. But, you know, just so many things happened uh, with that because uh, even... Um, there was one day when, uh, I tell you, I was sitting in the living room here in my home, 
and I decided to just go outside. But this is like before COVID, right? Happened, or uh, after? Yeah, before COVID and everything. And um, you know, I think it was either it was right after COVID. Sometimes I forget when it was. It was around that time. But I opened the door and I looked up and there was a cloud there that was about the size of a man's. It was it was big, but it was small, but it was close in. And it was so close that I just kind of went in the house real quick and I shut the door and I said, Jesus is coming. And James was there and he looked at me and he just looked at me like that, you know. And I kind of peeked back outside and when I looked, I saw two clouds. One was right next to it. And I came back in and I was like, oh my God. And that same day, later on in the day, I went outside again on my back porch in the storage room there and I was looking for some papers to bring them out. You know, just looking for some things. And as I was coming out, I looked up again and I saw, and my eyes was just fixed on these two clouds because it was like one was pouring into another one. I saw this pouring, you know, like it was a water spout pouring into another and, and my eyes were just fixed on it. I tell you, it was something else. And when I, you know, got back in the house, um, it wasn't long after that, that, um, you know, uh, this song, I lift my hands and shout. I think I actually know that song, that song right there happened after that, okay? Happened before that happened. So now this song that, that my grandson wrote the lyrics to, I lift my hands and shout, he brought me out. Now, let me tell you, I haven't told too many people about this, but I might as well just say it, and then I'm going to be finished here because I can go on and on with these testimonies. But that song, I lift my hands and shout. Uh, after my grandson had wrote the music, I came in another night. He wasn't here. My grandson wasn't here. And James was in the room sleep. And when he goes to sleep, He's out. He can't hear anything. He's just out for the night, right? And so I came in here and I shut the door and I turned the music on and I just started singing and just giving God the praise. I mean, I just was singing. And I, it was, it's a little over 10 minutes long that, of course, if you heard that song, it is, I never changed it. I just left it just like it was. I just was singing straight through. But while I was singing it, when I got to the part that said, I don't deserve a single thing, but you gave it to me anyway. It was something that I was singing right there because I knew that every blessing, see, all that music and everything I was listening to when I was driving through the mountain and how God was healing me and restoring me and it gave me an opportunity to sing again when I was going through the mountains and just different things. But when I got to that part, when I was singing that song, and if you listen real closely, it sounds like a door is slamming. Okay, now have you ever heard that? It's like it's shut. Right? And to this day, what I think what happened was when I said that part, I don't deserve a single thing. It was like the Lord just stepped in and shut the door. He says, now, I got you here. Like that way you understand, Kim. That my undeserved, unmerited favor. Okay? Not that, oh, I'm going to really mess you up kind of way, you bad girl. No. When I was, when you heard that slapping, I was clapping my hands, thanking God. Not getting hit around, no. I was clapping my hands. But that part right there, because if you listen to that music, I mean, I could just hear in him telling me, Kim, I'll show you where to go. I'll show you what to do. You know, I hear, Kim, I'll show you the way. I just hear him speaking to me in that song every time I listen to it. And it's just so amazing what God has done. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord, I could just go on and on, on and on. Oh, 
oh, with these good things and this good, good, good father that we have. Isn't he awesome? Look at us. He seated us in heavenly places. And this crown over here is Jesus' crown. Oh, yeah, this, is, this belongs to him. This is his crown that I crown him king of kings and lord of lords. Oh, yeah, he is. Everything that I have, everything belongs to Christ. This right here is a tassel, blue, royalty. And I, you know, it's just the things that, uh, the symbols and things that I, I like to, you know, just associate with this victory, even this table. This table right here, do you know, actually, I've had this table for years because I was going to have it, you know, in, you know, for later when I moved. And so this table was actually sitting outside on that porch in the back thing. It was in the box that it, I had bought it and I never took it out until, you know, just a couple of months ago, it was sitting in another part of this room. And this, you see what it is? This, like, victory with this big victory table. That's what this is. It's, hey, Jesus won the victory. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. For all of us, that's what he did. He won the victory. He gave us the victory. My God. And what we didn't earn, what we didn't deserve, oh my God. An unmerited favor of God through our lives. He's kept us, oh my God. He's kept us. He's like, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. Hallelujah, glory be to God. He's kept us. He's kept us in every way. And with his word, that bread, that word of his bread, and his, his body and communion and the blood. And he's washed us and made us clean and new. And I tell you, I, I don't even have a desire to do things that, you know, that he, he's taken all of those desires out of my life. You know, it's like to sin because that's why he came to build us up. It's a gradual change. Yes, it is. Glory be to God. But he definitely has given us the victory, and he did it all for us. So I just want to just go ahead and close now and just tell you, you know, what you already know in your own life, and that God is faithful. And he's got so much more in store for each and every one of us. And we just keep walking on the path. He will reveal that, yes, what you're doing is what he wants you to do. Because what is for you is for you. What is for me is for me. What God began a good work in us, he's going to complete it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are being formed every day we're being made new in him every day from the inside out and I tell you <laughs> oh how awesome a savior we have isn't he awesome and wonderful Jesus Christ the savior of the whole world my God from glory so if you don't know him you can have him today. Just ask him into your heart and you can say a prayer like this. <sighs> Lord Jesus, I believe you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins so long ago. Just come into my heart now and save me. Oh my God, be my Lord and Savior. Lead me and guide me in your way of love and truth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah.
Thank God for Jesus. Savior of the whole world. Oh my God. So many wonderful things he has in store for you and for me. Stay with Jesus. Let him bless you. Let him heal you. Let him deliver you. He's going to set you free. Okay? All right, All right now. now. One last thing. Remember, Remember to laugh out loud. Love only love. But live only live. In Christ Jesus, that is because he is the only way truth and real life. God bless you, the gay. I love you guys. See you next time on another song.